Hey there, I'm gonna talk a little bit about day one of the MLF Invitational on Lake Eufaula. I'm driving home now, I got done yesterday. Um, I ended up in 13th place, my best finish of the year so far. Um, I got some really good points out of it, point standings wise, I've moved up from 14th to 7th. Gotta be inside that top eight of the Angler of the Year standings at the end of the year. Um, so we're halfway through. We're through three of the six tournaments. The next ones are at Lake of the Ozarks and then the Potomac River and Mississippi River. So we've got two weeks until Lake of the Ozarks starts, but I'm gonna recap all of this. Um, if you wanna see how my practice went, you can see that from um, a couple days ago. That's already up on the channel. This one is gonna be day one. So. Going into day one, I had one area that I would say I felt pretty confident I could go in there and get some bites. Um, the fish were spawning in there. And then I had a backup area that was, I would call, good that I could get bites there. Didn't seem to have too much size. So if you want to hear how I was catching them in practice, like I said, go back, listen to that one. But I went to my area from day one, and my plan was to fish these rocky outcroppings that the fish seem to be spawning on. I wanted to go through them once, pretty quick throwing a Z-Man chatterbait. Um, I started a jackhammer with a razor shad on there. 17 pound Seaguar Tatsu, and what I was doing, I was just roll casting with my favorite rod, it was a 7.5 Hex. And I would just put that bait in each little crevice, and I was trying to pick off those real aggressive spawners. Um, you'll see that in the video here. And I was just kind of making those pitches back in there. And right away, I caught about a three something. Uh, good one to get the day started off. Worked through an area pretty quick. I had that one. I believe I might have even caught another one that I was a keeper, but it wasn't real big. Um, and then what I quickly figured out, there's quite a few boats in there. Uh, there's probably one, two, three, I would say three or four that started in there. And I figured out I quickly needed to slow down really pick up a uh, shaky head and really slow down pick us all apart that way I could get as many bites as I could from the fish that are there first aggressively this I wanted to get all the bed ones betters out of there so once I did that I picked that up I'm working my way flipping it along I was using a z-man shaky head it's a uh, I believe that one was a 316 thousand on day one when it wasn't super windy I was using a uh, seven inch finesse worm it was the Z-Man one, so it's a last tech green pumpkin. It floats up off the bottom real well, sits in their face, just really gets those fish fired up when they see it. Um, so that was good for really just kind of aggravating those fish, getting those extra bites because of it. Um, but as I worked my way back through, I was just kind of picking them off here and there. Uh, and then I worked my way down this one stretch that I had not been through yet. Um, I made probably one pass through it in practice. I've made one pass through it in practice. I had one bite that I missed and then one that I shook off. And I went there and I caught a three, a four something, and another three. And then I fished through everything again. I was throwing my uh, jackhammer. And that one I was kind of throwing up the bank a little bit, trying to see if I could get a pre-spawner again. And I actually caught one right there. Made it pretty close to the boat. That one was another three and a half so at that point I got rid of my two pounder I had 17 11 um, it was a good solid bag for day one there and with all that weight it worked out really well because then I was able to um, start running around and I was in there with uh, Cody Spence I believe is how you say his name he was second uh, after day one he had 21 pounds he was fishing back in there and I ta was talking to him throughout the day and we decided we were going to leave that area together because um, at this point it was just the two of us in there and we're like if we could save this for the rest of the trip or rest of the tournament we should be able to knock out a really strong finish get us both checks out of it maybe we can both top 10 out of there and um, that was the game plan so I left he left and I started running some of my I would say sea level stuff um, I went and checked a couple pockets that uh, I had caught a couple pre-spawners outside of them with the points in practice when the water was about 58 degrees 
at this point the water temperature was in the mid 60s and uh, I was thought the fish should be pushing back in those bodies and I fished through them and I caught some shorts but nothing crazy um, the wind wasn't very bad on day one day two and three it started rolling so that'll be another thing I'll tell you all about but I fished those I caught some fish they weren't too far from my main area and at this point I had one area that reminded me a lot of it um, but instead of being in the clearer water it was back in the um, real muddy water I, I personally I actually I don't even know the name of the creek but I was like I want to go check this see if there's any um, life there because in practice there wasn't but it looked like they should spawn on these rocks so I made a real long run went out through one bridge back through another and then I came down in there and I fished it with a chatterbait. I slowed down through that shaky head a little bit in there and didn't catch anything. So it was bad in that I didn't catch anything, but I still had 1711 and kind of rode it, rode it off for the rest of the time. Um, I was like, I'm not going back there. Um, it's just not going to be worth it for me. It's not in my close area that I thought had some potential. Um, on my way back to the ramp, there was an area that had a lot of wind blowing into it. And I had marked a ton of bait in this area. So I was like, no, oh, there was that wind crashing on there. Maybe it'll push some of that bait up on the uh, bank. And I went and took my jackhammer again. I was using that white one. Um, and as I'm throwing it down the bank, uh, I covered a decent bit of water, didn't have a bite. And then all of a sudden, it just absolutely hammered. And when I set the hook on it, it came flying out. I thought it was gonna be a real big one. It ended up being about two and a half maybe two and three quarter pound spotted bass, which didn't help me. Um, so that was interesting, but then I fished the rest of that bank. I still never had another bite. So I was like, all right, well, there's two areas I can just definitely write off. I'm not going back to. Um, I knew the wind was gonna blow really hard on days two and probably day three. So I didn't want to burn or have to go back to those areas and burn extra gas and extra time is really what it was going to come down to. So after that, I made my run back. Um, I have that Bass Cat Cougar, that Mercury 250 Pro XS, and this it rips. So it wasn't too rough that day. I was running probably 75, getting back to the way and um, checked in. And after day one, I was sitting in, I believe it was 17th place. Um, I was happy with that start. Um, the weights were actually higher than I thought it would be. So that was interesting to see. But overall, really good day one. Um, one thing I did forgot to mention, before I left my primary area, one of the things that really made me decide I was leaving out of there too was when I started, I picked up a Buckeye uh, ball and out jig and I was flipping it into those rock crevices instead of throwing that cheeky head. Something I thought was a little bit bigger profile, maybe I could get a bigger bite. I caught a 215 and it didn't help me. So that was where I was like, I can't be burning these fish up because that fish was on a bed, no doubt. Um, I decided I was gonna save that one for, or save that area for day two, which I talked about. So I hope you guys had um, some good info out of that. If you have any questions about the lake, if you ever been there, um, wanna know more about it, let me know. Happy to tell you more. Um, I'm gonna do day two and day three. They'll both be posted here shortly. If you have any questions, look forward to talking to you soon. If you do me a huge favor, please subscribe, um, give it a like, thumbs up, um, fish symbol, whatever, some emoji in it. Just help me uh, try to grow this page a little bit more. I've been having some fun with it and I wanna keep doing this. So have a great day and I'll talk to you again soon.
catch five yet? Four, that's yeah. That was number five there. The other ones were, I got one that's like 14 and then one that's like not much bigger, but. Uh, maybe three. It was like short and fat. <laughs> That's the first one I've caught in here though. That, I said that's the first one today I've got that was like got a little bit of beef to it. The rest of them have been a little male. Yeah, they're about, I think they're about to roll this tiny male. Yeah, there's a cold fish. Get rid of that little one. Just over four pounds. Whew. I get rid of a two-two. Threw him on the TH Marine's beam. Um,
Cody. 